Welcome Pattern Easters. Today's treat is a video dedicated to a selection of vintage crochet patterns, focusing on the cottage core aesthetic. So if you like to crochet rather than knit, you don't have to sit through lots of knitting patterns waiting for the crochet ones. I thought we could save the blankets, doilies or lampshade patterns for another day. I've also avoided all the granny square patterns, but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some inspiration from the 1960s and 70s for these fashion items in the future. There are a lot of beautiful floral crochet works out there that speak to me as cottage core, but given everything that's going on in the world from war and natural disasters at the moment, I want to highlight one modern pattern creator who's in the forefront of my thoughts at the moment. She is Elisa Verbitskaya. Apologies if I've mispronounced the name. Elisa is also known as at Alisa Sonia underscore on Instagram and at Lisa Sonia on Etsy. And she's a Ukrainian Etsy seller who produces beautiful floral crochet pieces and patterns. And for the last week or so, her Instagram feed has been filled not with the peace and beauty of her craft, but understandably with the horrors of war in her country. Our thoughts go out to her and all in Ukraine at this time. Elisa is selling PDF patterns for crochet flowers on Etsy just now if you want to support her and make something beautiful. This is not sponsored, but I have personally bought one of her patterns. If you are supporting other Ukrainian pattern creators just now, please share details for others to check them out. As with the vintage knitting patterns, I'll provide details of these crochet patterns if you want to search for them on reselling sites or use them as inspiration for your own design. So what do you think of when I say cottage core aesthetic? I think of cottage gardens, meadows, linens, a slower pace of life, country pursuits and winter walks. But do you also think of handmade crochet or knitted items as I do? Today I've picked some patterns from my collection you might associate with cottage core looks. For example, a flowing dress or waistcoats which allow your billowing sleeves to blossom whilst keeping your core warm, but also give you more of a dirndl look. Like my celebrity knitting patterns video film star Sadar, this was originally planned for the 12 Days of Christmas series. This would have been the 10th day of Christmas and it was going to be 10 Twilies crocheting. If you're not familiar with the Twiley brand for knitting or crocheting, here's a quick background on Twileys. You'll see on the patterns the brand's actually Twileys of Stamford. The company HG Twiley Limited was founded in 1936 in Lincolnshire. Unlike all the other wool companies featured so far, they didn't spin wool or produce their cotton themselves in Stamford. They took pre-dyed cones and wound them into balls or packaged them for their needlework kits. As Twilies was a Lincolnshire company at the time, all are written using British crochet terms. So let's start with the first pattern I could see being worn under a pinafore or jumper style dress for a very cottage core look. The pattern itself evokes a country cottage with its floral theme. It's pattern number 6326 and it could have been a free supplement as it stated it was featured in Women's Weekly magazine. The Twiley pattern is called Crochet Victorian Blouse. I'm sure dress historians will roll their eyes about that name, but it is a pretty pattern and it was designed for sizes 32 to 38 inch bust. Although clearly meant not to have positive ease, I think I would adjust the sleeve personally to give it a bit of puff to help fit over my upper arm. But that's the joy of making your own garment. You can fit it as you like. The high collar is achieved with a 10cm or 4 inch zip at the back. This is made up using a 2.5 or 3mm crochet hook. The pattern says the sleeve length is 29cm or 11.5 inches. An overall length goes from 55 to 57cm depending on your bust size, which is a 21.5 or 22.5 inch length. This could be made up from 14 to 21 25 gram balls of Lysbet, Lyscorda or gold fingering cotton depending on your bust size. The next pattern for inspiration is Twiley's number 5955 and the 8 pence price tag dates this to the early 1970s. This is for a crocheted dress with long sleeves and bust sizes 32 to 38 inches again with a hip size of 34 to 40 inches and with a length of 35 to 35 and a half inches. 
The pattern has a dropped shoulder, so sleeve length is 25 to 25 and a half inches. It uses 12 buttons to close the front and the sleeve cuffs. This might be quite nice to crochet in linen rather than cotton for a summer dress. It was made up with 29 to 35 balls of Lysbert yarn for the size ranges and the pattern reminds you to buy more if you want to make the skirt longer. The sleeve and skirt have a lace panel pattern. I like the look of this as cottage core with its button sleeve detail and the A-line skirt. I'd love to know if the crochet outfits and any of the patterns so far will inspire your next cottage core crochet project, so please tell me in the comments below. The third pattern is Twilight's pattern designer collection from Barbara Warner. Couture crochet apparently, number 5149, for a short or long dress. It is a fitted bodice like a dirndl and a straight skirt. If you wanted to add a bit more floof, you could always Frankenstein the bodice to the skirt of the last pattern, or simply add increases to the pattern at the waist. Unlike knitting when you crochet, you're generally only working on one stitch at a time, so trying an outfit is far easier as there's smaller risk of dropping stitches. The pattern was written for a 32 to 30 inch bust again, so not size inclusive I'm afraid without a little bit of maths anyway. Use up to 35 balls of the 25 gram Crozet yarn for the long dress or 18 balls for the 50 gram Stalite yarn using a 3 and 3.5 three and millimeter crochet hook. The short dress was intended to be 36 inches and the long dress 53 inches long. The fourth pattern has two simple tops for summer. One with a shell pattern and another they call a cluster pattern. It's a pattern number 5882, and again this is from the early 1970s, given both pre- and post-decimalisation pricing. The shell pattern top was designed for bus sizes 32 to 42 inches, and the cluster pattern top was 34 to 46 inches. It used crochet hook sizes 3 and 2.5 millimetres. The tops are crocheted as a back and a front, both top down before being joined at the shoulders and the sides, and has a simple edging applied. The fifth treat has a crochet and knitted top in pattern number 6196. They call it a sloppy joe, and it has wide sleeves, which if you wanted to add a cuff to, it should be fairly easy to give you a little puff to your style. Focusing on the crochet top, the sleeves and yoke are made in a strip with a dividing row for the neck at the appropriate time. The back and front are picked up and worked downwards. The bust sizes for the top is 32 to 42 inches or 81 to 107 centimeters with a length of 28 inches or 71 centimeters. It takes 1100 gram balls for the largest bust size patterned using a 4 millimeter hook. This is a simple pattern with mostly treble stitches. UK terms again. That ends the cottagecore twily pattern, so let's see what other pattern companies have to offer. Pattern number six I've chosen is from Sirdar, number 5254, from the 1970s given the price of seven and a half pence. It's a flattering waistcoat for a 32 to 30 inch bust. It's crocheted with a four and a half millimeter hook and only used six 50 gram balls of DK wool for the largest size. It has a v-neck which is flattering to most shapes and has plenty of space for these voluminous sleeves you may be wearing underneath. The edging is added at the end. For the seventh pattern I'm going to give you two options for Sirdar again. One in chunky wool and one in DK wool, depending on your preference. They're both for sizes 32 to 38 inches and their pattern number is 5991 for the DK weight and 6018 for the chunky weight. They aren't exactly the same crochet pattern, but the styling of the waistcoats are very similar, both belted by the models to give it a bit more of a waist. If you're a knitter that hates to knit cardigans because you're either scared to steek your knits or don't like to knit flat due to lots of pearls, then crocheting a cardigan or waistcoat instead may be the answer, as you can crochet back and forth quickly. Although neck and border bands look like they're knitted in rib, they're actually crocheted. But there's no reason for you not to combine both crafts if you wish, rather than crocheting the mock rib stitch. 
The DK version in terracotta uses a 4 and 3 mm hook, whilst the chunky pattern in sea spray colourway uses a 6 and 5 mm hook. The eighth pattern today is from Coates and is a crochet dress in stole or wrap. It's a late 1960s pattern given the 9D pricing and the shift style, but the floral pattern is lovely in the pale yellow shade. It's pattern number 3036 and it was written for two sizes as a 34-36 inch or a 38-40 inch bust. Given the openness of the crochet flowers, it was worn over a slip. Because it was the late 1960s, the hook numbers were pre-decimalisation as well, so they were hook number 9 or 8, which I believe is the equivalent to a 3.5 or 4mm hook. The ninth pattern comes from Mariner, and it's number 1709. It's crochet in DK or 4 ply, depending whether you want to crochet the shawl, which was DK, or the bolero top in 4 ply. The top is for bust sizes 32 to 38 inches, which uses a 3.5mm hook. The shawl used a 5mm hook, and both go well with the floral maxi dress as a cover up. The next pattern is for Peyton's number 2158 and it has a size range to allow the mother-daughter matching outfits. Although I would note the pattern border for the smaller size is a single flower and the adult sizes have a multi-flower pattern. This pattern is from 1972 and it was 8 pence at the time. The pattern interestingly had 6 working buttons at the shoulders on the adult pattern, 4 for the girls pattern which adds an interesting detail and more functionality for the top. If you enjoyed browsing these patterns with me today and want some inspiration for your next project or cast on, I think you will love to watch this video next. Stay safe, stay healthy and happy crocheting patternistas! Till next time!